One man said, even if I don't get into this program, I felt like the world forgot us. I'm Mary McFarland, and I'm the International Director for Jesuit Commons Higher Education at the Margins. And that is a new initiative, Higher Education at the Margins of the Jesuits, to provide higher education to those who are in areas that are unserved or underserved by higher education. You know, we have a lot of people ask us the question about why educate refugees if they can't work. And it's been a wonderful question to really go back to what is the intent of education. So can you tell us why you would like to join the university program? It's my dream. It's my dream. I'm what sorry. What we're doing is trying to design and experiment with a model of higher education that truly reaches people who have an intense desire to learn and have had no access because of life circumstances. Because education is about freeing, in a sense, what's already here. You know? When you look at an environment like the refugee camps, where so much time and effort has to go into just sustaining life, um, how do they get water? They are in areas that are very uh, arid, depleted of wood, so how do they burn anything to get water to boil or to cook? So um, there are absolutely genius people that live in these areas. If a genius is born in the camp, the chances of actualizing what could really happen for the world, for that person to actualize what they could do, are it's very slim. This is a segment in class where the students, there are 35 students, they are showing a greeting that one Somali student observed of the Sudanese, and he's explaining that he thought he had to break up a fight. And so as they started to get an appreciation for just what goes into a, something as simple as a greeting that could create misunderstanding, I think there's this curiosity about, well, how do we learn these things from each other? And just the question of, as we do learn more about that and they learn more in the camps, how that might contribute to a different future for people either in the camp or when they go home. The students talked about things like uh, in the cultural mismatch part, in addition to greetings, they talked about food. Um, food in many countries, because it is so sparse, is honored. And that means for a family, when they sit down to eat, they don't talk. They don't talk if there's food on the table, but instead they pay attention to um, their gratitude for having food, and they consider it a way to honor the food. A, a man who uh, 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 has been given a food day to, to himself in the village but he didn't do that. If a person is in a village where the people are starving and they are given the task and the resources to go get food, to bring it back to the village, and they go but they don't bring the food back, that that is in his mind the same thing as if someone is given access to education and they go and they get an education and they don't stay and make a difference to their community. So that's what this, this young man is, is responding to. And very typical, uh, I mean, if we looked at each of the 50 interviews at Zalika and 50 at Kakuma, what you hear is this authentic commitment of wanting to learn to give back to the community and to be ready if they get to go back home, how could they actually contribute to their country uh, to, to have things be better than what they experienced. Even if they end up in the camp for 20 years, how do they connect out to the world? And what we're seeing with these students is the world absolutely needs them.